Melba doesn't know when her condition will worsen, but she and her family try to laugh and live as best they can. She was dying of an incurable disease, and yet today... Can I lift you? She's cured. He was paralyzed, but today he dances. Was it the work of a miracle drug? Nope. They swear it was done by hand. Dean Kraft's hands. Finding Dean, as far as I'm concerned, saved my life. I basically see people when doctors have given up on it. Scientists don't understand it, but even they believe it. I think he's doing something. It's all in the public eye with Brian Gumbel. Featuring Bernard Goldberg, Maggie Cooper, Derek McGinty, Allison Stewart, and Peter Van Sant. And now, from the CBS Broadcast Center in New York, here is Brian Gumbel. Throughout history, those who would heal human ailments usually hail from one of two camps. They come under the banner of science or the banner of faith. But now comes a healer of a third sort, a man who seems to cure not through faith, but through the force of some other power that science can't yet understand. Derek McGinty has his story. Come on in. We're ready? Yeah, we're ready. Nelda Bus is hosting her monthly bridge club. And what you got? I got a club. Oh, look at that. No small miracle considering the bad hand life once dealt Nelda. Thirteen years ago, she was paralyzed from the neck down, diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, an incurable and fatal condition. I um, deteriorated very rapidly, so it was very frightening. I thought, yes, I am going to die. Nobody was more aware of Nelda's helplessness than her husband, Glenn. By the spring of uh, 85, she really couldn't get around by herself, and uh, eventually she lost all use of her arms and legs, so we had to move her everywhere she went. We had to feed her, we had to bathe her and take her to the bathroom, and you name it, we had to do it for her. Her doctors told her that there was nothing they could do, and that she would remain permanently and totally disabled. Then, Nelda read about a man who claimed he could cure her. It meant traveling to New York for treatments with her husband on and off for a year. A few months after she was actually able to start moving some fingers and toes, and just the very slightest little motion was, you know, just overwhelming. <laughs> and miraculously, within that year, Nelda traded her wheelchair for a walker and started regaining her ability to function normally. Oh, now you can walk. <laughs> the life-threatening disease that should have killed her seemingly disappeared. Can I lift you? I now have four grandchildren that I didn't have before, and I'm able to play with them and take them shopping and all kinds of things. Aren't you going to give me a hug? <laughs> yeah. Mm. If it wouldn't be for Dean, I wouldn't be here. That's just all there is to it. I basically see people when doctors have given up on them. You're their last hope. Right. Dean Kraft is not a doctor. He's a healer who's been steering Nelda and others in a very alternative direction for over 20 years. His is a very hands-on approach. I can feel your energy. It's really strong. Great. Growing up, Dean never thought that healing would be his calling. Music was what inspired this kid from Brooklyn. In his teens, he formed a rock band and thought he was on his way to a career in records. But one day in 1972, Dean Kraft was leaving his job at a New York City music store when he looked up and saw someone hit by a car in the street right in front of him. He didn't know it at the time, but this was to be his first experience using the power in his hands to heal. And I remember just stroking the hair on her forehead and just, you know, trying to cradle her until the ambulance came. And I just felt this feeling like I wanted to try to help her. And the ambulance came and the attendants looked at her and they said they diagnosed right there and assessed that she had broken bones and was in serious condition. And the next day, I called the hospital to find out that she was released with minor cuts and bruises. Now, at the time, I could not believe that I had anything to do with that. But it was that experience that made me think that something unusual was happening to me in my life. Needless to say, Dean quit the band and tried his hand at full-time healing, eventually setting up clinics in eight different cities. I'm not a faith healer, and what I do is not power suggestion, and it's not psychic. What Dean does, according to some, is cure incurable diseases and relieve chronic pain. He calls it laying on of hands healing. Some call it therapeutic touch, a phenomenon that has attracted an estimated tens of thousands of practitioners. 
Any idea what's happening when you lay your hands on somebody? What goes on in somebody's body that makes them better? Well, I know that when I work with certain people with cancer, in my mind I visualize that tumor getting smaller. I stimulate somebody's own body's natural healing system to get working again when it's not. So I feel myself more like, you know, I could say a, a strong battery charging a weak battery. I think Dean has a, a gift that he takes his energy and he can pass it to a sick body. In 1975, Adela Carney was a young mother living in San Antonio, Texas, when she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer that quickly spread to both her stomach and liver. I was dying. The prognosis was bad. Adela sought out Dean, and after several months of healing sessions, she was declared cancer-free. And although she had extensive radiation and chemotherapy before her condition improved, Adela's not giving much credit to modern medicine. Finding Dean, as far as I'm concerned, saved my life. Dean has done a bit of scientific investigation of his own. In a laboratory experiment, Dr. John Kometz, associate dean of Kane University's School of Natural Sciences, took a test tube full of cancer cells and had Dean lay his hands on them for about 20 minutes. According to Kometz's findings, nearly two-thirds of the cells floated to the top, indicating they'd been destroyed. The following day, even more dead cells turned up. Not ever have I seen that kind of change, and I didn't expect to see it then. It was really dramatic. I think he's doing something. He's doing something to affect those cells. We wanted Dean to repeat the experiment for our story, but he declined, claiming a month wasn't enough time to do it properly. And a month wasn't enough time to cure any life-threatening diseases either. So we assembled four people with chronic pain to make sure Dean's success stories were the result of his healing hands and not any sleight of hand. Each had two healing sessions scheduled one week apart. Even a sore leg muscle of mine got worked over. We all experienced the same sensation coming from his hands, heat and an intense vibration, almost like an electrical current. After the first treatment, I felt kind of a, uh, almost like a stinging sensation. And as I left, about 20 minutes later, the pain um, went away and it seemed almost like uh, a release in the area. Given that Dean boasts a nearly 80% success rate, it only figures that three out of our four volunteers would feel better. Dean's second book, A Touch of Hope, is a guide to self-healing co-authored by his wife Rochelle, a woman who from a therapeutic standpoint seems to have a pretty good deal. A lot of women would say this would be the ideal husband. Every little ache or pain they say, Dean, I sprained my ankle today. Dean, don't feel so well today. Is it like that? Um, in most regards it is. When I have a serious problem, I respond beautifully to him. But when you have a headache, you take a Tylenol, and that's the end of it. Um, and it's a little bit like the shoemaker's wife going without shoes. Like a shoemaker, Dean Kraft is in the business of repairing souls, energizing what he says is our own ability to heal ourselves. There's no denying he claims an impressive slate of achievements.